Today's episode was brought to you by and recorded at Paratara Gallery in Brooklyn, New York, 880 Atlantic Avenue. For booking information, go to BaratairaGallery.com. For more information, check the show notes. Clark, Clark, let's Clark about it. Clark, Clark, let's Clark about it. Learning every day, help is on the way. Let's Clark about it. Today we have Celeste Douglas. Hi. Hi. So, what is your job title and what does your average day look like? Well, I am the deputy superintendent of a district in East Flatbush and Canarsie, and my typical day is really not typical. So some days I'm in school, some days I'm in the office, some days I'm attending events, and some days I'm working on Saturdays. So for example, yesterday, I had to go to a school play, a school fair, and then to meet with some parents. So it's just, it's really just an amazing job. Is it really busy? It's really, really, really busy. So did you always want to be an educator? Like, did you go to school for education? No, not really. Well, when I was five, I wanted to be a model, but then I realized I wasn't tall enough. When I was eight, I wanted to be an actress, but then I I wasn't too sure about how to get there. But I really always wanted to be a lawyer. But after graduating from college and interning at a law firm, I realized that wasn't my dream and I decided I wanted to be a teacher. When did you realize that you wanted to be a teacher? It's a funny story. I was at, I was interning at a community center in Washington, D.C. and they had some really tough, tough kids. And everybody was afraid to hang out, like to be with them. But for some reason, they really liked me. And the director said to me, I think you have a gift of dealing with children. But I was scared to say I wanted to be a teacher because my father really wanted me to be a lawyer. So other than the busy parts, which are they, are they fun? Yeah, you know what's fun? I get to meet so many children. I get to work with so many teachers. And I get to still be in a school because I love being in the schools. And I forgot to tell you, I get to come up with all of these different initiatives and events that help children learn better. Is that the best part of your job? You know, I think it is the best part of my job. I think being able to create things, design things that's going to help children to learn is what I love doing most. Because when I was a kid, I sometimes didn't like my schools or my teachers. What areas of your job are difficult and how do you push through those times? So there's a lot of writing, right? So I have to write these reports um, for principals to help them to become better. And sometimes when you're writing these reports, like there's so many things you want to say, but you know if you tell people too many things to improve, they can't get better. So sometimes just figuring out like what is the best way to help a, a school leader or a principal or a school like succeed, that's what's really hard sometimes, just figuring out what's the best way. Yeah. So we're going to take a break, and we're going to be right back. Okay. Green Life Photography for all of your photography needs. Whether you need a photographer for a wedding, or you need a fine art piece for your bedroom or your living room, we've got you covered. Check us out at greenlifephoto.com. More information in the show notes. We're back. So, what do you think are the biggest issues facing education these days, and how are you using your current position as superintendent to tackle it? I think some of the biggest issues in education today is the fact that we are letting children leave our schools not being able to read. And when I was a principal, I would have students in my sixth grade not be able to read, and I didn't know what to do. Like, how do we close this gap really fast? So, for me, the biggest the biggest thing is that we have to make sure that any child who leaves our elementary schools are prepared for middle school, high school, and college. Because you have to read really big books. Right. And if you're not not able to read, then that's a problem. Right, and you don't understand how many people are leaving sixth grade and leaving elementary schools not being able to read. And then if you can't read, what are you going to do? If I wasn't able to read, it would have been hard for me because I love reading. Right, and guess what? So many kids aren't given that opportunity to love reading. So for me, really making sure that our schools allow students to become the best learners that they can is one thing. 
Another thing that's um, close to my heart is the fact that we have this implicit bias that we're working on in New York City, right? Where we have people sometimes not really doing the best for black and brown children. And so for me, it's like, how do I help teachers and principals create opportunities that really help black and brown children do well? What's implicit bias? So implicit bias is these feelings that people sometimes have about people without knowing they have it. And it affects the way they treat people. So for example, if I have, if I look at a young black boy, right, and my bias is to think that he's gonna be bad or he might do something wrong, when I'm teaching him, I teach, I teach like that. So I might, I might discipline him hard, harsher, I might give him more suspensions than I would give someone who's not of color. Which do you like more, being in the classroom, being a principal, or being a superintendent? Oh, this is a good question. So. It's hard to answer. I love being a principal. That was my favorite, favorite, favorite job of all time. But being a superintendent allows me to help more principals. So I think I say superintendent. For now, I'll say superintendent. For now. For now. So how has being a woman affected your job? Has it been good? Has it been bad? Somewhere in the middle? I think being a black woman has affected my job. Didn't really notice it about being a woman, but being a black woman. So, for example, when I first became a teacher, um, I worked in District 15, which was a predominantly white district, and no one thought I was a teacher, ever. They would think I was the school aide, they think I was a paraprofessional, but they never thought I was the teacher. And I feel like, as a black woman, people have sometimes not thought I was where I was supposed to be. So, for yeah. example, when I was a principal, people would always think I wasn't the principal because I was young and I was a black woman. So if you couldn't be an educator, what would you be if you couldn't work at a school? I would want to be a politician because um, I'm always about trying to improve the world and like change, like change things so that when you grow up, you can say I had the best opportunities. And so for me, a politician or actress, because, you know, I think I got a little bit of, you know, <laughs> Halle Berry in me. So what's the best advice that you've ever gotten? The best advice I ever gotten was from... Sheila Collins and said to me, believe your life is like magic, work hard to accomplish that magic and it will happen. And the reason why I say that is that sometimes we believe things can't happen and we don't dream big enough. So I think just dream big and work really, really hard and it, it'll happen. It will definitely happen. What advice would you get to someone who wanted to get into education? Is that the same advice as that you got? It's funny because since I didn't get advice to really go into education, everybody wanted me to do something else. I would say to people that um, take time to work with youth. See if this is something you really want to do. So volunteer at your community centers, you know, hang out with your little brothers and sisters and see if you like doing that. And then when you go to college, minor in education because you can become a teacher with almost any degree undergrad. So minor in education just to make sure this is what you want to do and then just do it. You know, and some people might say to you, like, why would you want to be a teacher? And I'm telling you, that's the best job in the world. So just do it. This was awesome. Thank you so much. Um, tune in next time to hear about other interesting women. Thank you so much. This was the best thing that's ever happened to me in my life. So thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Music for today's podcast is provided by bensound.com.